Hi folks, good to be with you today. I have my brother from another mother, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going out today doing some evangelism. So we're just going to make uh, two or three short videos. And maybe we might film some of the bit that we go out, either driving the car or, or going into uh, Cheatham Hill. Uh, so brother, um, we're just going to talk about the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, I was brought up a Jehovah's Witness for like 14 years mm. uh, as a little kid. And uh, you've been talking to Jehovah's Witnesses recently. So uh, can you just give us a few bits of advice uh, to anybody out there who, who might be uh, have someone in their family who's a Jehovah's Witness and they want to talk to them or, you know, just a bit of advice on what to say to Jehovah's Witnesses. What, what have you found? the most effective thing to say to them, to get them to think, just for a few minutes. The most effective thing that i found of speaking to Jehovah's Witnesses is basically is to learn their doctrine and to see if it stands up to what the Bible teaches. And the best thing, what you're best doing is speaking to the Jehovah's Witnesses about their beliefs, ask them what they, what they actually believe and, and then test it against the Bible. And the best thing to do is to learn the Bible what the Bible teaches on these things. For example, the Jehovah's Witnesses say Jesus was an angel in his pre-human state before he became the Son of God. Um, there's not one bit of scripture that I can find that, that points to that fact. Mm. I've even questioned the Jehovah's Witnesses on this and they've given me these passages that just do not fit what they're trying to tell me. Oh. And they're very, very weak passages. So one of the passages they used was that Jesus was a slave in Philippians Equality with God is nothing to be grasped and all that, but it doesn't say he's an angel. Um, another scripture they used. Should, should, we, should, we, should we have a look at that? Uh, yeah, Philippians. I think it's Book of Philippians. Yeah, if you want to use that one, yeah. So. This is what I found uh, recently when I was on the street. So, these are quite so knowledgeable. Uh, Philippians, is it? So, there you go. Yeah. Um, I'll just look it up now. Ah, uh, here we go. It's it's Philippians, um, chapter two. It is Philippians chapter two, um, verses five onwards. I'll just read anyway. It says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took in, and took upon himself the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men." Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses say he's in the form of a servant, so that means he was an angel. He must have been. He must be an angel because he's in the form of a servant. Yeah. And angels are servants, according to the Bible. Yeah. Servants yeah. of uh, they minister to those to inherit salvation. Yeah. So, but when I pointed out the the bit in the Bible where it says who being in the form of God, and was equal to God, they denied it, even though it was clear in the Scripture. Right. So yeah. I refuted them on that one. And I think it's either one or two Second Thessalonians where it says Jesus will come with the with the trumpet call of the archangel. That's another passage they use to try and say right, that right, Jesus right. is an angel. Um, there is another one in the Old Testament, but I've not got it with me at the moment. That's in the, I think it's in Daniel somewhere. What, what was that one you were saying about uh, the Alpha and the Omega, and they were saying it doesn't. They were saying it doesn't mean God. That's right, yeah, I said to them, I asked them the question, I said, who is the Alpha and the Omega in the, in the New Testament, the first and the last? They went, Jehovah God. So I said, well, Jesus is saying he's the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, and they oh. said, no, no, Jesus isn't, we don't believe Jesus is God. And I said, well, I know you don't believe it, but the Bible teaches it. So do we go with what you feel you believe or what the Bible teaches you believe or what the what Tower teaches? Mm. So they said they said the they disagreed with me and they said that the the book the words in Revelation were not the words of Christ. So I produced my Bible which has got the red letters of Christ in it and I said the red letters there is when Jesus is talking. Um, they're the words of Jesus Christ in red letters, and it stumped her a bit because she's never heard of a red letter Bible in her life, and I kind of stumped her with that one. Amen, amen. That's good, bro. And no, sorry, go well, on. No, go on, go on. Uh, well, a couple of more minutes, if you could go for a couple of more minutes, and then we'll we'll round it off. Um. There, is, there is another passage that stumped the Jehovah's Witnesses, and that's in 1 Timothy 3.16, where it says, 
Um, I'll just find it. 1 Timothy 3.16. It says, Great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to read it because it's an important passage this to, um, to, find, to read out to them. Uh, I guarantee it will stump them every time and, they'll, and they will try and get out of it and try and change the subject. Uh, 1 Timothy 3. It says in 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Wow. That is a powerful passage of the incarnation of Christ, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is very clear to me, that God was manifest in the flesh through Jesus Christ. In the book of John it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the mm. Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Mm. And that's in, con that's in comparison with that parry, parry, um, passage, passage yeah. um, preached upon the Gentiles, believed on the world. Who I said to him, who was received up in glory, who died and was resurrected? And they said, Jesus said, is mm. that speaking about Jesus? And they went, I'd say so, yeah. And it says... God was manifest in the flesh. Wow, wow. Yeah. And there's the incarnation. So Jesus was incarnate. I said God manifested himself as a man through the person of Jesus Christ and they rejected that. And I said it's clear in scripture. Mm. So you've just got to mm. use the word of God to refute their arguments. But also, also when you discuss with them, let them give their position away as well a bit. Yeah, that's good, bro. If a Jehovah's Witness is watching now, um, and they're in the watchtower. How, how? What would you say to a Jehovah's Witness about salvation? About how, if a Jehovah's Witness is doing the, the work that they do, they go on the doors, they do the thing that they do, and they think they're doing the right thing. Mm. So, what would you say to a Jehovah's Witness who who might be watching this video about what salvation is and how how is salvation different from what they're saying? Like, what 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 are we trying to do and in terms of the gospel. What is the gospel and how is it different from the Jehovah's Witness? Okay. The gospel is good news. Okay. The cross, which the Jehovah's Witnesses deny and water down and call it a torture stake, mm. is where salvation is found at the foot of the cross. Mm. The Bible says salvation is found in no one else except the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. The gospel is this, that the good news is preached, the mm. eyes are open to the blind, the deaf can hear, and the and the captives are set free so the good news is is that uh, righteousness is only found in jesus christ mm -hmm. and that's the good news of the gospel is that christ died for our sins christ died for the ungodly and while we were still sinners christ died for us so the message of the cross is this that christ died for our sins at that cross and that's where we find forgiveness Amen. and if anyone tries to water it down with a different gospel saying the cross he didn't die on a cross, it was some kind of torture stake, then it's not the gospel. Amen. Amen. And we're, 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 we're doing this video today to encourage Christians to, to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses. But if you're a Jehovah's Witness today, we're, we, we, we're doing this video because we love you and we care about you. We're not here to, to put you down. We're not here to attack you. We genuinely love you and we desperately want you to get saved, to, to know that salvation that Mike as I said, because if you don't, there is a heaven and a hell. I know that you don't believe in a hell, but Jesus said there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you read uh, Matthew 25, it says eternal punishment. If you change the word eternal punishment to eternal entertainment, you'd be expecting eternal entertainment. So when he says eternal punishment, it means eternal punishment. And we want you to be saved from that. And it's what Christ has done, shedding his blood giving his life for us. So, as Jehovah's Witness today, please, please consider what we're sharing today, what Mike has shared today, because what he's sharing today is the truth, it's from the Word of God. So please, as Jehovah's Witness, think about what we shared today. Please go and study your Bible afresh, because always remember this, he's telling you about what the Bible says. What you're teaching is what the, what the Watchtower Society have taught you. So you need to open your eyes afresh mm. to the Bible, to the Word of God. Um, 
couple of things. Is there any book that you could recommend to a Jehovah's Witness or a Christian? Um, uh, can... uh, any, any any book that that might help them, or I, I'll give one or two pointers. But if you if you've got anything that you've read that you yeah. that might help, one book Jay gave me was the Kingdom of the Cults. Um, I don't know the author, but it's called the Kingdom of the Cults. Walt, Walter Martin. Walter, Walter Martin. Martin. There's another one called Conversations with Jehovah's Witnesses. I do apologise. I don't know the name of the author. Is it is it Rhodes? Something Ron Rhodes. Sorry. Ron Rhodes. Ron yeah, Rhodes. Yeah. Conversations, and it's basically. It's real life conversations between Christians and Jehovah's Witnesses that you're likely to encounter about the doctrine and their beliefs and showing ways to refute it using the Bible and gently bring yeah, it into the yeah. truth. Yeah, what, what's it called again? Uh, conversations with Jehovah's Witnesses. By Ron Rhodes. That is a superb book. It's one of the best books ever because when you're talking to Jehovah's Witness, uh, if you attack the Watchtower, they, they'll just they'll just put their, their, their arms up and they won't like it. But if you can just show them from the Bible, then they're going to listen to you more. And this book that Mike's recommending you by Ron Rhodes uh, is an excellent book because it shows you the Bible passages to use. So it's really, really good. And the Walter Martin book, uh, Kingdom of the Cults, is an excellent resource on various uh, groups, religious and cultish groups. And uh, there is a chapter in there on the Jehovah's Witness. But also if you could listen to videos by Walter Martin, he's very good. At lecturing on how to talk to Jehovah's Witnesses uh, and is a very good resource. So we're going to finish here. Uh, check out our uh, website Royal Blood Ministries. There is a, a my website jasonburnspreacher.com but there is a, a website called Royal Blood Ministries website and Twitter and we haven't been doing much on there recently but we will do in the next few weeks. We'll start to uh, put some of these notes down that Mike has, has been doing on the Jehovah's Witnesses. So that's Royal Blood Ministries. Pray for us, pray that the team would grow. And uh, just to let you know, we have a booster. Uh, I was saying about the need for a booster. So this Ooh. is a booster. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a, a microphone there to go out and preach and share the gospel, so. Could I make one more point as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. I'll just make one more point. This is in the book of Colossians. It's Colossians 1.15. It says, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses say firstborn means that he is the first created being, first creation of God. Mm. Um, just want to let you know, firstborn doesn't actually point to creation, it's actually a title. And it's a title given to um, the Son of God, who is the Son of Man, who is a representation, so the rep representative wow. of the human race, as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King wow. Jesus. Um, now it says here, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven. Just to let you know, in the book of John, it, it says God creates by his word. That's in the beginning. That's in Genesis as well. It said God creates by his word. Jesus is the living word. Okay. So God says, let there be light and there is light. Jesus is the light of the world. Um, it says all things were created that are in heaven by him that are in, that are in heaven and in earth, mm. visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Dominions, principalities or powers talk to the heavenly realm, wow. such as the angelic realm. So if Jesus creates the angelic realm, he cannot be the Archangel Michael. It's an impossibility. <laughs> Amen. Okay. And he says, all things were created by him and for him. If he creates all things, he cannot be a created being, can he? He cannot be the first creation of Amen. Jehovah. Amen. That's awesome, bro. That is awesome. Powerful, isn't it? That so is the, awesome. Thank you. Amen. That is absolutely awesome, mate. Thank you so much, bro. No so, pray for us. We're going to be going out today doing evangelism. And each day, we're trying to build a team for Royal Blood Ministries. And uh, I'm thrilled to be working with Mike today. And we've got others that work with us. We're trying to build a team. So, please pray for that. And uh, pray that we get to talk to more Jehovah's Witnesses and share the gospel. Amen. So, thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Brilliant. I was looking at the other day.